Here's a deceptively simple looking equation that's hiding some beautiful structure. We want to count how many pairs of natural numbers A and B make this true. Think of it like asking, in how many ways can we write this massive number as a power? The number we're after, let's call it M, and we're curious about its last three digits. Let me formally define what we're looking for. M is the number of ordered pairs of natural numbers A and B that satisfy our equation. Our goal is to find M modulo 1000, which gives us the last three digits of this count. Now, whenever I see an equation like this, I like to think about what's really constraining these variables. What's the fundamental relationship that A and B must satisfy? Let's isolate by taking the B teeth root of both sides. This is where the structure starts to reveal itself. What we're doing here is peeling back the layers to see how A depends on B. Taking that Bth root gives us this relationship. Here's where the power rules come to our rescue, letting us simplify this nested exponent. So A is 20 factorial raised to the power of 24 factorial divided by B. Notice how clean this looks. Now here's the key insight. A has to be a natural number. This innocent looking requirement is about to tell us everything. You might wonder, what if the exponent is a fraction? Could 20 factorial be, say, a perfect square? Well, for any number to be a perfect k to u of power, every prime in its factorization needs an exponent that's a multiple of k. But 20 factorial has the prime 19 appearing exactly once. Since one isn't divisible by anything bigger than itself, 20 factorial stubbornly refuses to be a perfect power. So our exponent must be a whole number. This means for a to be a natural number, our exponent has to be a natural number too. In other words, 24 factorial divided by b needs to give us some natural number k. And what does this tell us about b? It has to divide 24 factorial perfectly, with no remainder. So b can only be one of the divisors of 24 factorial. This is our first major constraint. This insight is about to unlock the entire problem for us. Here's the beautiful part. Each divisor of 24 factorial gives us exactly one valid pair. Pick any divisor as your B, and there's exactly one corresponding A that works. It's a perfect one-to-one -one correspondence. This means our answer M is simply the number of divisors that 24 factorial has. Mathematicians have a nice notation for this. D of N means the number of divisors of N. So we've transformed our original problem into something much more concrete. Count the divisors of 24 factorial. To count divisors efficiently, we need to break 24 factorial down into its prime building blocks. There's a clever formula, discovered by Legendre, that tells us exactly how many times each prime appears in a factorial. Let's see how many times 2 divides 24 factorial. We get 12, then 6, then 3, then 1. Adding these up gives us 22. For 3, we get 8 plus 2, so 10. 5 appears 4 times. 7 appears 3 times. 11 appears twice. And the larger primes, 13, 17, 19, and 23, each appear exactly once. Putting it all together, this is what 24 factorial looks like when we reveal its prime structure. Now comes the beautiful part. These exponents are about to tell us exactly how many divisors we have. Here's the key insight. For each prime, we can choose any power from zero up to its maximum exponent. That's why we add one to each exponent, then multiply them all together. We build this product to find m. Let's evaluate these sums and see what we get, which simplifies to this product. Now we just need to multiply these numbers together. Since we only care about the last three digits, we can work modulo 1000 to keep things manageable. I'll group those four twos together as 16. When working modulo 1000, factors of 2 and 5 deserve special attention since they can create powers of 10. Let me group these strategically. I'll split this into two groups. The second group, 5 times 4 is 20, times 16 gives us 320. So we have... The first group, 23 times 11 is 253, times 3 gives 759. 
Now, we just need to multiply these two numbers. 759 times 320 equals 242,880. So M equals 242,880. Remember, we want the last three digits. Looking at our result, the last three digits are 880. And that's how we solve this beautiful problem. I hope you enjoyed seeing how a seemingly complex equation revealed such elegant structure. If this kind of mathematical exploration resonates with you, consider liking this video and subscribing for more deep dives into the patterns that make math so wonderful. Until next time, keep questioning and keep discovering.